Okay, we're at Psalms chapter 64. Thank you for coming and taking part in the Word of God. Psalm 64 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. And this is a psalm of just wickedness. David's going to describe to us what the wicked man does, and it has a glorious ending. Hear my voice, O God, and in my prayer. Isn't that just David? Lord, hear me. I'm praying, Lord. Come on, Lord. Hello, Lord. Lord. I'm praying. And we all do the same thing. Lord, come on, hear us. I've done it countless times in my life. Lord, are you listening? And the thing is, we got to realize when God when it comes to our prayers, God answers three ways. Yes, no, not now. And this may be not now. Preserve, put up, take care of my life from fear of the enemy. So David's in fear of the enemy. And he's calling upon God and David had much trials and tribulations with, with uh, his enemies. That's his whole life practically. Even in the kingdom, his own children. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. So there are people gathering together, Saul, and then Absalom. They're, they're getting in behind closed doors. And, okay, what, what do we do to get David? Let's find out where David is. All right, contact these people. We're going to kill him. Tell him, you know, put David here. Stop him. Don't let him get out. We're going to come. We're going to kill him. I want you to go. Over, I want you to go get. My, I want you to go get David. I want you to kill him. Well, you know, sir, he's sick in bed. Well, you go in there, you get him on his bed, you bring him to me so I can kill him. There are closed doors, David is saying, and I believe it is so, to kill a man who's righteous with God. And I know that too with the public ministry. I know there's been closed doors. How can we shut that guy up? How can we get rid of that guy preaching? How can we get rid of this person passing out gospel? And, you know, the police are called, 911's called, the city's called. I guarantee they probably got a hold of lawyers, and I got a hold of my lawyer, and back and forth. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. From the insurrection, and that is a rising against civil or political authority. Now, I believe that was the charge of uh, Barnabas, uh, not Bar uh, Barabbas, excuse me. He was caught in insurrection, rising up against the government of the workers of iniquity. So David says insurrection, uh, going against the government. We, all us Republicans, we hate the Democrats, and we're going to power over the Democrats. That's insurrection. That is a congregation against civil politics or authority, uprising. And David says that is workers of iniquity. When you rise up, you take guns, you take papers, you take writing, you take a void, and rise up against the government. I'm for sure you're not praying to God of heaven, the God that saved your soul. Because if you were praying to God in heaven, the God that saved your soul, you would be reminded, Romans 13 says, pray for the people in power. You would be right that Peter said, pray for the people that are in power. Because Paul and Peter had Nero, that was a person in power, and he was killing Christians left and right. And they told us, pray for those people. I pray for uh, Trump. I pray for the soul of him, his wife and his children. I pray for Janet Poliski, for her soul and the soul of her family, Obama, and any president still alive in their family. I pray for all their souls. I pray for the governors, maybe not by name, but you know the governors of the states of this country. For the Queen, of, for the Queen of England. They ain't gonna do you no good to fight it. What if God wants what you don't want? You know, God had to bring taxes to bring the Lord Jesus Christ to be to be born in Bethlehem. What if what if Joseph revolted against the tax rate? Jesus would not have been born where he was born. What if you're going to fight the government, right? And you postpone the Antichrist for four more years. 
four more years. Four, okay, fine. I'll tell the Antichrist, wait four more years. Oh, Lord, bring the rapture. Eh, you wanted four more years. And I know you say I'm ridiculous, but hey. I'll stand before the same judge that you stand at. The judge and seat of Christ. And if I'm wrong, wood, hay, or stubble. If I'm right, you get wood, wood hay, or stubble. Pray for them. Send them gospel tracts. Who wept. That means to rub by sharpening. You take an axe against a grindstone. You take your knife against a sharpening stone. Who wet their tongue like a sword. The imitation of Jesus Christ. Because the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes back with the sword coming out of his mouth, the word of God. They bend their bows, plural. They shoot their arrows, plural. Now, what are the bows and what are the arrows? Evil, bitter words. And like I said, I think you said this last night or the other night. When I grew up with sticks and stones, they break my bones. Or arrows may hurt me. But names shall never hurt me. That's the biggest lie. Again, with the arrows of Adolf Hitler I talked about the other day. How much destruction that one man's tongue did in World War II. And I guarantee there were many and many and many rulers, many and many people with their tongue have destroyed lives and families and countries and people just by the tongue. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Snipers. That's what we call snipers. You don't see him, and the perfect is a man that he's trying to do right with God. And the perfect in the Bible is not always, oh, 100%. A perfect means, or it could mean is, you know what? You're trying to do right. You're aiming for the Lord, and you fail. You, you falter, you, and you confess your sins, and you get right with God. But one day, we will be absolutely perfect. Suddenly, do they shoot at him and fear not. They're aiming at that perfect man and they don't care. I don't care what I do to him. I don't care what I do to his family. I'm going to go out have a couple drinks tonight. I'm going to have a party. I deserve it. I don't care if I get in the car behind DUI and, and kill a family. I don't care. I don't care if I hit somebody in a crosswalk. You know, they're walking across. I don't care. I don't care if I sell illegal drugs to someone and they pop too many of them and drop dead. I don't care. I don't care at all. That's a cold-hearted, sinner, wicked person. I don't care. And we see in other places in the Bible, they will say, God doesn't see me. And they'll get themselves a lawyer, they'll get them off. But they won't get themselves a lawyer before God. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne, judgment, wherever they stand. They encourage themselves in evil matter. They encourage themselves. They hype themselves up. They rah-rah themselves. They get the, the pom-poms and I'm going to do it. Yes, I am. I can't even imagine much more than describe what I've just described for them to pump themselves up. I don't know how you would be so wicked that you would you would find something wicked to do and just, hey, let's do it. Come on, let's go do it. Come on, come on. I mean, what do you do? I mean, you do it with good issues of chocolate or something. What do you do to hype yourself up to do wickedness? There is a payment. Proverbs chapter 1. Come on, let's go kill these people and we'll take their precious substance. That must be the way to do it. And it must be like Proverbs chapter 1. Let's get other people involved. The more I can get involved in this wickedness, the better I feel. That's wickedness. That's the point of the devil. If I can get more people to go to hell, and I can get more people go against God, the devil's. Ha if the devil can be happy, he'll be happy over that. If the Antichrist can get the entire world against one race of people and put a bounty out on them, and they're going to go chasing after them, but the very few sheep nations, that will please the Antichrist. That's wicked. They commune, 
of laying snares privily. And snare is a trap. How can I catch him? How can I trick him? And it's not always a bear trap. It's to get them to go somewhere or make them do something unwittingly, unknowingly. They want a Nehemiah to go in the temple. Well, I got other business. Leave me alone. Well, come on over here to this place. No, I ain't going over to that place because I got business to do. Try to get you where you don't belong. Try to get you something that you don't need to be doing. And the Bible says we're not to do that and abstain from all appearance of evil. If it looks evil, don't even do it because you may be set, get set up. Could be at work, could be at home, could be in school, could be anywhere. And you got to be on the watch because the devil, he, he says he's our adversary, he's a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour with a trap. People need to realize, all right, you know, I watched that television program. You know, I watched that late night. I, I'm in a hotel room and I'm in a pastor's conference. I heard pastors tell me this. I'm in a pastor, I'm watching these dirty movies. No one's going to know. Someone records that bill. Someone's paying for that hotel room. Someone's going to pay. That, that That stuff ain't free. And you don't realize, if they can bring cable into your room, through a cable, through your computer, through a television set, and they can give you a television program, whether it's good or not, what makes them think that there's not a camera? That, listen, the computer has a camera. What makes you say that they can't take your camera and broadcast it for the government and record it? I think it's Donald Trump said, is it Donald Trump or uh, Bill Gates? One of them said, they cover up their computer. I think both of them. One of them said, I believe, they covered that, com that camera on their computer. They have a piece of tape over it. Even they are afraid. I forget who. Recording. Yeah, you better believe the government's recording you. Listen, if you can go through a red light, even though it's illegal right now, but if you can go through a red light right now and they take a picture of your license plate, Listen, I worked, and I can't tell you where, but I worked in a defense company, and I know that the imaging of the product that I work for the government, you will be surprised how far you can be off. And we saw some, and we 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 saw their pocket with a pack of cigarettes, and they were across the river. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to say anything else more. But that was the government. You got to watch out for those traps. And they're privily. The devil is going to say, Ah, there's a trap over here. He ain't going to do that. They say, Who shall see, who shall see them? Who's going to know? God. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and good. And the devil. Now the devil, according to Job 1 and 2, he may not be everywhere, but he's got his devils everywhere. You realize if God would open up our eyes and see all the devils all the, the evil and, and, and the good around us, it'd blow our brains. Someone's always watching. And it's not Santa Claus. I know, it's not the season. Santa Claus is a few more years. So, it's not the Easter Bunny. They're liars. I had to say that. They search, the wicked search out iniquity. <laughs> they go looking for iniquity. Where can I go to sin? And I guarantee there are people today looking for looking for iniquity. Uh, this bar is closed. Where can I go and get some alcohol? Where can I get drunk? Can't go down to my local tavern. There's closed. Where, where can I go to? Where can I get involved in sin? Oh, the place where I it's closed. I, where I'm going to go? Funny, you know, they say the bars are closed, the restaurants are closed. I haven't heard anything about prostitution. What about the strip joints? Are they closed? If you're ever going to find coronavirus mixed with sex, they didn't shut the bars down until I started saying something. The day I said, hey, the bars are still open from bike week in Daytona Beach, I broadcast it, and then, they, oh, let's close the bars down. Somebody must be listening to me. They search out iniquity. 
They accomplish a diligent search. That diligent search is in the law, in the Bible. And somebody said, hey, this person did, you know, somebody comes up to their pastor and say, Pastor, I saw this. that pastor, that church, as the priest in the Old Testament would be. Okay, I got to go find out. I got to ask questions. I got to get witnesses. I got to get evidence. I got That's what a cop does. When a cop shows up, there's an auto accident at the corner. And he takes his tire marks and, and he takes pictures and he draws angles and he goes up to, did you see this accident? How much of this accident did you see? And he goes, did you see this accident? Uh, okay, what did you see? And he gets all the stuff and he puts it all together and diligently writes a report that car A made a misturn into car B. I have this person that saw it. I had this person that saw it. This driver reports this. This driver reports that. The passenger said that. I got the pictures. And in that aspect, here's a wicked man lurking into, studying into, and how can I do it more perfectly to commit iniquity? They accomplish a diligent search of iniquity. Verse 6. But the inward thought inside of every one of them and the heart is deep. Inside they're thinking about how can I do wicked? Jesus and Jeremiah have told us and Paul the heart is wicked above all. Out of the heart comes adultery. Oh, that's a sin. Out of the heart comes murder. That's a sin. Out of the heart comes malicious. That's a sin. Out of the heart comes envy. Out of the heart comes pride. Out of the heart comes... The, and it's their very nature. They don't have the new birth where it says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. One day God says with the nation of Israel, I'm going to give them a brand new heart. Right now, their heart is bitter against Jehovah. It's bitter against Christians. How dare you bring up this name of Jesus? Supposedly, you know, they say it's our Messiah. Now, Isaiah 53 is us, and the people persecuting Isaiah 53 is those Gentiles. Where did that bad word come? Where did that cuss come from? It came from your heart. Where did that, where did that thought come from? It came from your heart. But God. All the way down to verse 6. Here's the wicked people. David's like, Lord God, help me with these wicked people. These are what the wicked people are doing. But God. I love that story. But God. That changes the whole. You go through the chapter. But God. That changes everything. Whether good or bad. But God. That's a big two words. But God. Oh, everything is so miserable. So everything is so terrible. So, but God, or you know, we're just having luxury. We're just having all kinds of fun. We're just having everything. But God, one day the church is going to keep on going, high-minded, lofty, and lovers of selves, and itchy ears. But God's going to call the trump. <laughs> One day, the seventh year, the tribulation period, that Antichrist, he, he's going to be Antichristing, and his people are going to be following him. The Jews are going to run off scared to a place prepared for death. And, and, and the lights go out, and the stars go out, and there's no light. But God's coming. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Oh, they got what they did. We, they shoot with arrows. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. But notice they shoot arrows, God shoots a arrow. An arrow, one. That arrow is going to be the sword that comes out of his mouth. As much as God said, let there be, that guy's an enemy. He's burnt, trumpled over him, the Bible says. The blood was spattered upon the reins of the horse in Jesus. Suddenly, look at verse 4. Look at Galatians 6-7, verse 4. They may shoot 
in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him. Ready? Let's look at God. Galatians 6, 7. But God shall shoot at them with arrows. Verse, six, uh, verse 3, excuse me. Suddenly they shall be wounded. <laughs> the wicked got exactly what they did. The word of God is the word of God and it's correct. Oh God, you know that that rich person, oh, that, 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 that fiend, and he makes our job terrible and he doesn't pay us enough and I can't pay my bill and he's just wicked and he's just vile and I, I, he won't receive Christ. He won't change his way. He died, miser he died miserably. He died happy. He died rich. He died secure. He's got a great will for all his family. But God, will take care of him. But God will take care of him. So they are wounded. So they shall make their own tongue. I thought we saw something about tongue. Verse 3. To fall upon themselves. Okay, now look, now look, now look, now look, now look. Verse 3. Who wet their tongue like a sword. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. I said the words are arrows, correct? Correct. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Their own mouth is going to condemn them. Can you imagine they're standing before God, the great white throne judgment one day. And they're standing there. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Well, didn't you use my son Jesus Christ's name as a... Didn't you use as a cuss? Didn't you? Why didn't you cuss any other name? Didn't you say, go to hell to somebody? You, there's no hell. Why did you say to hell? Why don't you say Hades? Didn't that preacher, or didn't that gospel track, or didn't that sermon, didn't that say that, prepare to meet thy God? Oh, you don't believe in me? Now you don't believe in me? God is going to call back to the lost man. Revelation chapter 20. He's going to open up the books and everything that man said. Because Jesus said, I think Matthew 7. By every idle word. Here we go, idle word. There it is, there it is, there it is. Man shall give an account thereof. Every idle word. Everything that came out of that tongue. It's going to come right back in that guy's face. And I believe, it's, like I said, uh, I, took, I took a writing class one time in, in high school. And one of the very first lessons I learned in that room was you write about something you know. Don't write. Don't go out of bounds. You've never done it. You never. I would not write about climbing a mountain. I've only seen a mountain. I never climbed one. So let me tell you about street preaching. I tell them they're going to be without excuse because they heard the gospel. And when they'll go stand before God and say, God, well, I never knew. God's going to open up the book, say, were you there this Saturday? I think so, Lord. But, you know, maybe, I don't know how it's going to be, but, uh, Stanley, will you come up here? You want to bring your family? Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. You remember seeing this guy and his family? Oh, I hated that guy. Oh, that guy just yelled at us. That guy, hey, get, hey give us a piece of paper. That guy told me, told you about me. When you rejected him, you rejected me. Paul on the road to Damascus. People don't bother me when they upset me and make fun of me and cuss me out around street preaching. And I know they're doing it to Jesus and not to me. Their own tongue shall fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. <laughs> that, that great white throne judgment as more and more and more and step up to that throne. They know they're in trouble. Probably the first 10 up there. When you get 11 to a billion, I don't know how many people have been on this earth. I mean, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. If that last person is Cain, <laughs> he's had plenty of people to know he's in trouble. I want some people going to walk up to God and say, all right, I give up. I'm guilty. We're going to go through the... Oh, come on, let's just get it over with. 
because everything is going to come out. Don't you dare show my family the adulterous affairs I had. Don't you show my employees how much I cheated them. It's going to be all opened up. Every idle word. You're not going to get out of that, sinner. And I say sinner because you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be held about every single sin you have done. And God is going to name every single sin as you can get cast off in the lake of fire to pay for every single sin that Jesus Christ paid for. You go to hell to pay for your sins, and when God is righteous enough and holy enough, he's going to cast you into the lake of fire, and he's going to tell you all your charges, because the courtroom, when you stand before a court and stand before the judge, what's the thing they do? Name the charges. Well, your honor, he was jaywalking. Your honor, he was caught shoplifting. Your honor, he was passing in a, in a speed limit. So, Lord, he was... And if a human judge does that, what do you think God the judge is going to The books are open. You better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and get your sins under the blood. And all men shall fear. Oh, I guarantee. But that fear is too late if you're a lost man at the great white throne judgment. Too late. I don't know, I just had a, I can't remember, there was a song where I grew up, It's Too Late, something like that. Man, come on, this stupid mind of mine. I try to remember good stuff I can, and then a stupid song comes up. Now it won't pop out of my head. And shall declare the work of God. What is that for the lost man? That guy standing before the great white throne, he's standing before Jesus Christ, he's been judged. That man is going to get down on his knees. There's nothing there. Heaven and earth is fled away. There's just you, emptiness, and a throne. Everybody around, all the saints, all the angels. And you're, what you're going to do is you're going to declare the word. And Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, to hell. What's going to happen? Every knee shall bow. And when you declare Jesus is Lord, you have declared the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of his doing. What does God do? He's rightfully judging them. And you're not going to bribe that judge. And that judge is not going to miss anything. It's all going to be laid out. It's all in the book. It's going to be some things you forgot. And you will wisely figure that you'll be cast into the lake of fire that burns forever if you're lost. You'll cast off, Jesus is the Lord and he's righteous for doing what he's doing to me. Wow. He'll never get out of hell. And he'll never get no more mercy. You gotta listen to that gospel track. You gotta listen to that preacher. You gotta listen to that street preacher. You gotta listen to the person that opens up a Bible with you. You gotta listen to your mother. You gotta listen to your wife. You gotta listen to whoever is bringing you the gospel. And you better make sure it's the biblical gospel. And not the crap that's out there today. And you don't like the word crap, oh well. Because if it's not the Bible gospel, it's not according to the King James Bible, then it is crap. Or dung. Somebody probably turned me off because I used the word crap. You use worse words than that. The righteous. Hey, there I am. Shall be glad in the Lord. Why? For every soul that God casts off Jesus, casts off in the lake of fire, you're going to be, thank God, Jesus, you saved my soul. You realize that? Listen, the tears are not wiped away to Revelation 21. And 22. Maybe we're going to remember some of those sins we've done. 
Wow, I don't know. I'm I'm speculating here. You can throw this in the garbage. But what if we see a man charged with all this? Like, whoa, Lord, I did some of that. Man, thank you, Lord God, for saving my soul. What is the value of Calvary as I watch another one go? Look, Jesus is Lord, and you're holy and righteous. And you're going to thank the Lord forever that you're not going in that place. You're not in that line. You're going to thank the Lord that God told us to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And he calls up a loved one of your family. And they're standing before God, the great white throne judgment. And God said, okay, bring Stolly Hayward up. Yes, Lord. I don't know who relative. I don't want to get in. But here's a relative of mine. Did you tell them about Jesus? Yes, Lord, I did. Did they listen? But Lord, where they are right now, I assume no. Did this man tell you about Jesus? Well, he gave me a piece of paper. Did you read it? No, I didn't. And they say, your loved one, your family, the part, I mean, they say, Jesus is Lord in your holy, you're going to be like this. Oh, God, I thank you for my grandma inviting me out to church. I am so sorry I told her no, 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 no. And I thank you for that message that Sunday morning. I don't even remember what it was that Pastor Spalding free that you put on my heart and you brought Joe Whitmore Saturday afternoon. Thank you, Lord. I'm not in that crowd of lost people. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be like that for every family member that I've witnessed to are going to stand at the great white throne judgment. Thank you, Lord. It's not me. Thank you, Lord, that I did what you told me to do to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord. But it ain't going to be like that if I got family members I never witnessed to. Imagine God calling you up. Did you tell them? No. Lord, I'm sorry. There won't be no glad there. The righteous shall be glad. Well, you didn't tell them. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. And shall trust in him. Right after this, but I remember after the great white throne judgment, I saw new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem come down. Can't wait. Realize when new Jerusalem comes down, there's no more faith. When we're standing at the great white throne judgment, witnessing all of it, there's still faith. Faith, the great white throne judgment. Here it is. Faith in New Jerusalem, faith in New Heavens, the newer, they haven't come yet. Realize when you die, and the Bible says you're absent from the body and present with the Lord, that's your faith is done. There you are with Jesus. And that trust in the Lord. And all the upright. In heart, oh Lord, do you see what the Lord did in this chapter? Here's the wicked man, here's the righteous man. Here's the wicked man, here's the penalty of the wicked man. The penalty of the wicked man is exactly what the wicked man did. Galatians 6 7. The upright in heart shall glory. What's the glory? The glory is. Those that are righteous in the Lord go on to eternity to be with the Lord in New Jerusalem. They don't get the lake of fire. They don't get to spend eternity with the devil. They spend their life with God forever. That's the blessing.